Does BYU just keep surprising us all and making me look like a darn fool for doubting Kalani Sataki and company? Drake Tolock on Big 12 joining me to pick the rest of the Big 12 games. I'll get his pick on Kansas State, Colorado, but that's going to come later because I think Kansas State's going to win. He'll just have to sit with that for a little while and try to formulate a response to my absolutely airtight argument there. But I want to start with uh, BYU here, Drake. This is an undefeated football team, just as we all imagine. They, along with Florida State, among the earliest to hit over or under their preseason win total, according to our friends at FanDuel. Are they making it 6-0 and at home against Arizona this week? Yeah, no doubt. They're definitely going to make it 6-0 and this week. And you ever watched, I haven't made you the Santa Claus reference to you yet. Have I, have I done this I love you? the Santa Claus movies. Hit me. With Tim Allen. And people, listeners of my show are like, oh, that's the ninth time this guy's done this. When Tim Allen kills Santa Claus, which is way darker if we really yes. break down the concept of that movie. Oh, that's an uh, accident. Who becomes Santa Claus, Spencer? Tim Allen. Tim Allen becomes Santa Claus. When BYU beat Kansas State, when you beat a contender in the Big 12, you now have to become Santa Claus. You've got to become a uh. contender in the Big 12. You can't be a 7-5 and five team that was just, ha, 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 we wreaked havoc on the top of the Big 12 and kicked everybody out of college playoff contention for an at-large bid. BYU has to win down the stretch, and this is another week against an Arizona team who is quite volatile. They won on the road against Utah. Now, granted, Utah didn't really have a quarterback in that game, but we've seen Utah play well without Cameron. Rising. We've seen their defense play plenty well, and they didn't do enough to beat Arizona. Then the Wildcats were behind the eight ball against Texas Tech on the road. Now they go to Provo. Big noon kickoffs there. Joel Klatt's there. Uh, you've got the Gus Johnson. And, and with that, Spencer, my only worry is the pomp, the circumstance of a day game and all that you put around Did it. Did you just leave out the All-American girl, Jenny Taft? And Jenny Taft is going to be on the sidelines with uh, and the BYU players. I will players not are stand for Jenny Taft overlooking the same us. age as Jenny Taft, by the way. Uh, her and all the BYU linebackers. Um, <laughs> they're they're going to be hanging out on the sidelines this weekend, and that's my only worry is that the not the lights get too bright, but the lights aren't bright enough because the day game of BYU, the pomp circumstance is too much, and BYU kind of falls victim to it. However, College Football Insiders stats o war on Twitter. They break these games down based on analytics. BYU has an eighty five percent chance of victory, while the spread is. Is like four right now. They have BYU winning by 14 points. I think BYU covers and wins by at least 10. I want to pick Arizona, even though as Wildcat why. fans why? would probably t- just hear me out here. As Wildcat fans would probably tell you, I have not been waving the pom poms for Brent Brennan and company. I'd also also like to point out I have been summarily right on Arizona to this point. Here's why I want to pick Arizona. I I don't know if I am, but the reason that I want to is because there is always a game that a team that pushes for a conference title in the Big 12 loses and you're like, wait, how did that happen? You know, like, like, why did that take the Big 12 last season? Different league, but same sorts of vibes. Why did Texas lose to Oklahoma? They were a significantly better football team. There's a rivalry factor, sure. But this just feels like one of those games where everyone wants to just write in BYU. And if, if BYU's defense plays the way they have the last uh, several weeks and they're coming uh, back home, of course, off a of bye, no less, and Arizona is not, I, I do wonder what Arizona's offense is going to be capable of. Because if if Jay Hill's defense doesn't have that connection, if they don't have the it factor to slow down Arizona, if the crowd is just okay because it's day game, not a night game, suddenly... No Fafita and T-Mac go for a combined 250 yards and three touchdowns, and you can lose a football game. Yeah, I'm worried if BYU gets down against this offense of Arizona, that would be a struggle because I don't know if I'm all the way behind A-Rod and the BYU offense yet. I'm not. I don't believe that Jake Retzlaff getting down 10, 14 points early can put BYU in a position to win. The defense is going to have to do that. So that's a scenario in which BYU can win. Why does Brent Brennan wear the lays, both of the lays, like, it's, it's the Polynesian thing with Ted McMillan and Noah Fafita, but like Kalani Sataki doesn't do that. Like that's the most Polynesian football team of the country. I just, I'm, I don't I'm, know. I'm going to need the expert for every week, too. Like, at some point, we just don't. Uh. Okay, yeah, that's as good a reason as any to pick against Arizona. That said, give me the Wildcats in the upset here. I'm, I'm taking it. Just This is just a vibes pick. I'm going to look back and say I was an absolute fool at one point in time, or I might look back and say I was a, I was a visionary there. But uh, speaking of Utah, you mentioned them. They play at Arizona State this week in a game that before the year you would write off as, oh, that's an easy win for Utah. They're going to cru- 
but you would have said the same thing about Arizona because it was at home, but Cam Rising didn't play. I don't care if Kyle Whittingham himself were to come out, which he never would. If he were to come out and say, Cam is going to play this week, he's going to start at quarterback. It feels like Rising will find a way to not finish the football game. At the very least, I take Arizona State plus six. I don't think Utah loses another football game. Kyle Whittingham has been very good off a loss in his career, but give me Arizona State to keep that close. Kenny Dillingham has got the boys humming right now. Yeah, this is going to be a low-scoring game, and yes. that bodes well for both teams. Actually, it's not going to hurt Arizona State if that's the case, and here's why. Their efficiency against the rush on defense, 11th in the country against the past 41st. Guess what Utah can do? Run the football, not throw the football. So if you're Arizona State, you're in a good spot when your run defense is better than your pass defense. And your run defense analytically is elite. Hey, guess what? Utah on third and fourth down offensively, 119th in the country. Yeah, that's not good. Arizona State, conversely, offensively, 30th in the country. They're 15th in rushing efficiency. Camp Scadaboo is good. If you ask the analytics, just the analytics, 66% chance for Arizona State to win. They pull the upset this week if Cam Rising does not play for Utah. If Cam Rising doesn't play, I'm taking ASU 100%, but it's yep. back to everyone's favorite game. Is he going to play? If he does, I'll take Utah to win because with him there, they're the best team in the Big 12. That still remains the case. That fact has not changed. It's just this this boring question at this point. Is he ever going to play? Let's talk about one of the most under-the-radar games in all of college football this weekend. Number 11, Iowa State, traveling to Morgantown, West Virginia. Drake, this has got... <laughs> Do you smell that? Do, 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 do you smell that? What is that? What is that, is that? a trap? Is that a rat? Oppor- opportunity? No. No. Upset. I is smell that, upset. Did you fart? No, that was a big short reference. I hope somebody out there was able to get it. But I, I am on big time upset alert here uh, for Iowa State going to West Virginia. I like the Cyclones. I, I also don't dislike the way West Virginia has been playing recently. Yeah, uh, apparently Alan Bowman is not playing for Oklahoma State anymore. He's just kind of maybe going to hang it up in the middle of the season. I, it's funny as that is, like that that's a rumor in Stillwater right now that Garrett Rangel will move forward for the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. And what that says to me is that this West Virginia team has still not gotten their marquee victory. Yeah, a dilapidated Kansas. And yeah, an Oklahoma State, who is one of the most disheveled Big 12 teams in, in the conference. Iowa State, on the other hand, has shown me nothing yet but consistency. They are the most even team in the league and they play pretty much the same way every weekend both offensively and defensively they're 26th in the country running the football 25th throwing the football that's as even as you can get they're really good on third and fourth down offensively as well and then their defense is just elite especially against the pass their secondary has been spectacular now what does West Virginia do well they run the football they got three guys that can do it from Jaheim White CJ Donaldson Garrett Green their receivers still have something to prove if this game becomes West Virginia just keeping it on the ground Iowa State wins by 10 analytics also favor Iowa State by double digits. I'm going to go Cyclones sneaking this one out, despite it being the coal game for West Virginia. Iowa State 21 17. I think they get, but everyone, I just want everyone to be aware that you're going to look around at all these amazing games on this legendary, much hyped, deservedly so, Saturday of college football is going to be great. And you're going to go, wait a minute. Number 11's in a dogfight with who? They're doing They're doing what now? Like, this is not, not going to be an easy game. Uh, Cincinnati UCF, really quick. Yeah. I don't know that I actually care about this game. Oh, do you? Hey, boo, stop. I do. I host Locked On Big 12. Cincinnati wins this game by 10. Mm. UCF mm. can't build the foot. I watched them live last I know. Week just, I know. And Sorsby's playing quiet. some nice football for Cincinnati. Yes. They've been better than people thought. I, I, I also struggle to pick UCF even at home. They are not playing good football right now. So no. I'll uh, I'll go with you and I'll just copy whatever your score prediction was. I wasn't I was tuned out. Um, but anyway, Drake, I wasn't actually tuned out. Just 31 you know, 21, 31 21, Cincinnati. Yeah, I can see that happen to Kansas State, Colorado. I think Kansas State wins. I think Kansas State covers. I've got 34 27. I think this is going to be a really, really fun football game. Colorado can win if Kansas State isn't careful. But I do like the Wildcats in this spot. Yeah, I I lean Kansas State. I worry, okay, if this game's low scoring, I'm definitely going Kansas State. If it's a shootout, can Avery Johnson keep up? You saw them get buried against BYU in that BYU defense. But we know that Colorado's defense is not near as good as what the Cougars give you. My biggest question mark for the Buffs as of right now, who have they beaten? Like, who have they beaten? 
their maybe their best win was against North Dakota State. I mean, being UCF by 27 on the road, I'm not I'm not going to completely take that away from him because I was surprised at the time, and it is no doubt an impressive win. You know, the question I have for Kansas State in this game, Drake, they have uh, collected as a team 12 sacks this season. That's not a huge number. It's not necessarily terrible. But you're averaging just over two sacks a game. That was UCF's issue, too. They couldn't get to the quarterback against Colorado. Uh, yeah. I do that's, go back that, here, though. Like, like, if you, like, if you tell me right now Kansas State pressures Shador Sanders and sacks him at least three times, give me give me the Wildcats. Big. And I mean big. If they don't do that, eh, it's going to be a lot harder. Uh, just three times? I mean, they're averaging two and a half per game. So you need yeah. a half more sack. The here well, is Shador's really used to getting on? sacked 11 times a game. So, right. You know. So three, is that your, really your metric for Kansas State? I, I believe that the Wildcats, four. again. All right, I'll go to four. How about that? We'll go to I'm four. I'm going to go a team that's a bit more even keel. We saw them implode against BYU. I think Colorado's defense is as strong as the Cougs. I, I think Kansas State ekes this one out, though. I really, oh, no, you know what? Let me, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it comes on the show later this week and says he's going to tattoo his butt if Colorado beats Kansas State. Give me Colorado. The Buffs win it 20, no, 34 to 28 Colorado. Mm, that was incredibly prepared. I love every second. I'm a Drake Dole, locked on Big 12. That's how every game in the Big 12 is going this week. We will not be wrong on a single matter, even though we disagreed on, uh, you know, several of those games. Thanks, Drake. Thanks. That was Spencer McLaughlin. We picked all the games in the Big 12 this week. The Colorado one's kind of interesting. This has been the Lloyd's World. We come back tomorrow for uh, more football. Oh, best bats. And the Big 12 Squad episode. Locked on. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Dos Segra.